I definitely did stand out though. I think. Like, <laughs> as in, not like, you know, the class that clown or anything. But yeah, <laughs> I was definitely a big personality there as well. My family's always been in small business and my mum at the time was opening a hair salon. And so they said, oh, there's a spare room. Do you want to come and do some body waxing out of it? Because I'd been to beauty school and I said, yeah, sure. Then they sold the hair salon and I kept the waxing salon and it just grew from there and I had this yeah. great little business and that was I had that for a few years before I sold that and moved here but I came here and I was just like wow there's so much more to say I'd gone from Broome where yeah. I'd obviously grown up then yeah. I went to boarding school in Perth and then left boarding school had that business for a year or two and so more than a year or two god what am I talking about it was a few <laughs> years and then um yeah came over here and I was like wow yeah. and I say to my parents all the time you know I could have moved to London you know, even though they want me home, totally. I'm like, could be a lot further away. <laughs> could be a lot further yeah. away. <laughs> so I made the move. Yeah. And in my first day of mobile brow work, I made my twice as much as I would in a week. So I was like, holy shit. This might work. <laughs> this is, that was one day. It wasn't even, it was like half a day. And I was Aww. like, wow. Lee had me go to Cosmo. Um, Sarah Jane and then, and Heidi had me going out to Sassenbad. I was going to Napoleon Purdue's <laughs> offices because I had a friend that worked. So they're just going to a lot of company, like, yeah. you know, female based work basis I guess yeah um and then from there I just got too busy to the point that I was like I have to stay in this in the studio at Chris's gym so it was just back to back and then yeah. fell pregnant and it was just had to hire staff and yeah but yeah I've kind of got him to thank for all of that the mobile was fun but yeah. it just got too hard in the end so without further ado this is skin and you if you are listening I hope this helps you glow whatever that might mean Kristen hi thanks for coming on the pod um for someone, I think, who is an incredibly iconic businesswoman in Sydney now, I feel like we don't really probably know a lot about you, probably because you don't do podcasts. <laughs> um, <laughs> can you talk a little bit about growing up in Broome and what you were like when you were younger? Well, I'm pretty much the same as what I was when I was younger. <laughs> pretty erratic, a little bit naughty, always having fun. But, yeah, yeah. I was pretty happy. I had a really good, uh, you know, childhood. Yeah. Can't complain. It was very <laughs> different to living in Double Bay now. Yeah. And I love going home, loving, love visiting Broome. Yeah. I was there just recently. It was so nice and so warm. Um, but, yeah, my childhood was pretty different to anything on the East Coast, I'd imagine. Yeah. Um, the town had 10,000 people in it. You know, everyone knew everyone. Yeah. But it's so funny, when I was back there last month, that so many of my friends that went to school in Perth, like I did, yeah. all moved back to Broome. So <laughs> it's still hope for me one day, Mum and Dad, if you're seeing yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I guess it's a lifestyle and it is, like you said, very different to oh, so different. what's yeah. here. And even I assume in Perth, really yeah. different as well, being a much more rural yeah. um, there. but I definitely did stand out, though. I think. So I guess <laughs> in, not like, you know, the class that clown or anything. But yeah, <laughs> I was definitely a big person there as well but it was you know it's very grounding when I go home and it's so lovely being back home and seeing everyone yeah and my kids love it and I just feel for them I look at how they sort of their life is here so different yeah to what mine was but you know we're and here. I think you know it gives you the best of both worlds a little yes. bit as well like yeah. you said you can go back and enjoy that yeah. and then still have you know the crazy life you do yeah, yeah. no I do I did think that I thought thank goodness the borders are open now yeah. because I just need to go back more yeah. Which is what just have a bit of grounding, yeah, over there. back there and just calm. It's so quiet and so chill, which is good, yeah. And come back to the bustle of like, <laughs> Bay Street. That's it. Um, so you opened your first cell on yourself at 19. Mm -hmm. What was that like being so young and new to the beauty industry? Um, I think I kind of, I mean, my family's always been in small business, and my mom at the time was opening a hair salon. And so they said, oh, there's a spare room. Do you want to come and do some body waxing out of it? Because I'd been to beauty school and I said, yeah, sure. Then they sold the hair salon and I kept the waxing salon and it just grew from there. And I had this yeah. great little business and that was, I had that for a few years before I sold that and moved here. But I think because I had my dad who was always, you know, small business minded and he'd been in business for years. He was doing that side of things. I was just waxing and he was doing my books. <laughs> um, thanks, Dad. Thanks, Dad, yeah. <laughs> I think I was paying him like $100 a month or something. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> His pocket money. <laughs> anyway, um, that was really good. And I should have probably sat down with him and learned a bit more about it, but I just wanted to go out at the age of 19. I just wanted yeah. to work and go shopping and go to festivals and, you know, yeah. have fun. Um, but, yeah, I kind of learned from an early age that I could manage my own business and mm. that's what I wanted to do. I think it's interesting because you do hear, and I know I was the same, you know, if you take the path of 
uh, finishing school and maybe not going to further study or doing something at like, you know, a beauty school and, and then starting your own business quite young, you very quickly, I find, become accustomed to, oh, I'm earning more money than anyone else my age now. So yeah. I can do <laughs> X, Y and Z. I do um, remember like going to festivals and being like, when some of my friends couldn't afford tickets, I'll yeah. never forget stuff. <laughs> I'll buy your ticket. Yeah. And we just all go out and have fun. It opens a whole nother world, yeah. you know. But I didn't have any concept of money back then. I was yeah. living at home. I was just, you know, it was in and out and totally. in and out. Like, <laughs> terrible. Yeah. And I was always still a bit naughty like that when I was shopping. <laughs> but anyway. No, but it is. It's it's just it's a different lifestyle when you're that young, I think, because mm. you are probably earning more money than most people going to university, for example, yeah. you know, who are probably just... They were, yeah. And, yes. <laughs> and so it is, it's totally different. And I, yeah. it very quickly for me, I know, became very appealing. I was like, mm. why would I want to go and study again? Yeah, or, yeah, you yeah. know, it was, probably wasn't until later, I was like, God, now I probably really do need to go study something. But, <laughs> no, I still want to go and study, so I want to study business yeah. <laughs> and accounting. So, but I think it's the best kind of education. You yep. learn on the job and you learn through mistakes, yep. you know. And I definitely have done yes. that with me. <laughs> Over the past 20 years, I definitely have. That's yeah. it. But, you know, and that's education you can't get almost yeah. because there are some things that you just probably would never have learned and it's mm. not until you've actually done them or you have fucked up and then something's, yeah. you know, come out of it. Mm. Um it's a totally different education than, you know, going to do an MBA or yes, whatever. Yeah. It's just... Well, it's ours is kind of real. a people-based business. So when we yeah. say clients, we mean, I'd say sometimes three, four an hour. Yeah. And it's people with, from different walks of life, life and different stories to tell. And yeah. I learned so much from my clients and I still to this day am in touch with so many of them, even yeah. from, from when I was sort of 18, 19. So yeah. it's pretty incredible. Yeah. But yeah, I've had a lot of guidance. I've been very lucky. <laughs> Totally. And I think it's funny because even, I mean, particularly back then, probably when you first started, beauty, beauticians, beautish, like beauty clinics, it was sort of an everything. It wasn't yes. now where it's niche. niche. Yeah, yeah, we're so niche it was, now. You did everything. But I had a pretty niche business back then too. I had a Brazilian waxing salon, so it wasn't nice. yeah, so an all around thing. Yeah, I yeah. started doing all around, you know, nails yeah. and everything. And then I was like, no, I'm pretty good at this. And I was so quick. So just whacking in and out. <laughs> it's just like. But I think, you know, that's probably one thing. I mean, it, it was ahead of your time, really, because mm. now it is. Like, yeah. it's people have niched down because yeah. you realize, I mean, it's a better service to be able totally. to offer one thing yeah. rather than being able to do everything. Yeah. It's just not possible, mm-hmm. you know. So, and especially now that beauty is so broad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so broad. Um, and I guess, so what then was your drive to move from Perth to make the move to Sydney? So, um, I was. I had a, my best friend was living over here and he was a PT. No, so he was, sorry, that's a lie. <laughs> he was training with a PT at Darlinghurst Fitness First. Yeah. And this PT was living with my good friend, Lee Campbell, mm-hmm. and her then partner. And so um, we started chatting and I flew over and then, you know, we started dating and, yeah, I sold the business and moved over. And that sort of all ended after a few months, which was fine, <laughs> but we're still, you know, still on good terms. It's all great. Um but yes, and then obviously Lee and I lived together and it was yeah. just beautiful. We're still obviously best mates to this day. I feel like it's <laughs> the ultimate jealous girl gang of like you <laughs> and Lee and Amy and Jade. Like you couldn't get a better girl gang <laughs> of people. I am we totally have a lot of jealous. We have a lot. Oh, join us. Oh, yeah. I literally would. We've it's got lunch so in a couple good. of weeks. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, so we... Um, we lived together and that's why when I made the move and saw the business, yeah. I was like, oh, I love it here. And then, yes. yeah. Never left. So Had you ever thought about coming to Sydney no. or was it literally just a no. whim? <laughs> this was 2009. See you, and Dad. Yeah. I was like, I'll be back in a year. <laughs> no. Love that. That's yeah. amazing. What was it that you did? You just love the more I, city side? Yeah, of it? I came here and I was just like, wow, there's so much more to say. I'd gone from Broome, where yeah. I'd obviously grown up. Then yeah. I went to boarding school in Perth and then left boarding school, had that business for a year or two. And so more than a year or two, God, what am I talking about? It was a few <laughs> years. And then, um, yeah, came over here and I was like, wow. Yeah. And I say to my parents all the time, you know, I could have moved to London, you know, even though they want me home. Totally. I'm like, could be a lot further away. <laughs> could be a lot further yeah. away. <laughs> so. No, that's great. I, I think it, it's probably, you know, I think particularly WA, maybe because it, it does feel so far away mm. from the East Coast, it, you kind of either like you love it over there and you stay there for life yeah. or you make the move over no, to the No, yeah, East. and they a lot of us do. Like yeah. there's a huge contingent. Yeah. <laughs> like there's heaps of us over here, but a lot do go back when they have babies. But yeah, um, I've, we've managed to make it work. No, 
it's hate really it from good. It, which it's... is the hard part. Like, having kids <laughs> without family around is really hard. Totally. Tell me yeah. about it. I know I'm the same and it is yeah. a constant struggle yeah. every day. Yeah. It's really hard. Um, so I guess when you s- did come here, you started doing mobile treatments first um, and then moved into your partner's gym at the time. Mm-hmm. Was the goal always to start up a clinic here in Sydney or were you just kind of trying to find as many opportunities as possible? No, so I was living in Lee and I was working for Benefit yeah. and loved Benefit, still love the product, yeah. love the brand, I love it, love everything that they're about. Um, and that sort of kick-started my career into in brows. Yeah. Then I left and worked for a company called The Brow Bar and they're also really great, um, the quite big in Queensland. Yeah. Then after that, Chris, my ex-husband, who he had a gym at the time, yeah. he said, oh, I've got this room and, you know, you can come and work out of there. And I was so petrified that I wouldn't be able to pay my bills. And he was like, I promise you I'll look after you. Like if you yeah. can't, you know, you can't have to pay your bills for one week, I'll look after you. And <laughs> I, so I made the move. Yeah. And in my first day of mobile brow work, I made – twice as much as I would in a week. So I was like, holy shit. This might work. <laughs> this is, that was one day. It wasn't even. It was like half a day. And I was Aww. like, wow. Yeah. So, yeah, I've got him to thank for that. Yeah. And then from there it just snowballed and we just grew and grew and grew. And then obviously the industry was sort of sort of here and then it just yeah. I skyrocketed. So yeah. it was the right place, right time. Yeah, as absolutely. Well. Yeah. And yeah, right time. And I think right idea, like you said, Benefit really kind of set the yeah. bar for brow yeah, work and, and sort of niching it out. Yeah. Um, and then I think it just really took on a life of its own yeah. and, and became so much bigger. And, and I think that I feel like maybe that had to do with a similar time of the rise of, not the rise of, but the kind of more popular rise of skincare coming in because then skincare yeah. kind of became, oh, if you're using retinol, you can't really probably yes. wax anymore. Yeah. And, and then that sort of just was starting to yeah. peak out that people were going, oh, eyebrows are actually kind of a big deal. Big deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they can make or break we've your all, face. We've all ruined them in the 90s. Yeah. How do we fix them yeah. now? Um, so, yeah, it kind of, I think, definitely right time. And yeah. um, really interesting about doing mobile treatments. Were you actually going to people? Yeah, so... Um, Lee had me go to Cosmo, um, Sarah Jane and and Heidi had me going out to Sassambad. I was going to Napoleon Purtis offices because <laughs> I had a friend that works there, just going to a lot of company, like, yeah. you know, female-based workplaces, I guess. Yeah. Um, and then from there I just got too busy to the point that I was like, I have to stay in, this, in the studio at Chris's gym. So it was just back to back and then yeah. fell pregnant and it was just had to hire staff and... Yeah. But, yeah, I've kind of got him to thank for all of that. The mobile was fun, but yeah. it just got too hard in the end. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting So I always think mobile is the most amazing treatment base if you can do it. Yeah. Just the convenience oh, of it. I still Especially, get spray tans, mobile spray exactly, tans at home and I've got a spray totally. tan booth in my clinic. <laughs> like, pay for someone to come to my house which everyone laughs at but but it is especially when you've had kids yes. being able to have something come to your house and totally. not have to go and find a park yep. and take an hour out and get the kids out of the car yep. anyone mm. would pay whatever whatever for yeah. that treatment I'll like I walk around totally, naked yeah. <laughs> Within my completely spray no I, I think that is one of the best ways for anyone if they are looking at starting out um being able to do mobile treatments totally. if you can is yep. such a great mm-hmm. benefit. And I think it just opens you up to a huge client base yeah, around. Totally. You end up going all over the place, so yep. you're getting people from all over. Mm-hmm. And um, and if you can combine, like I'd get people to sort of bring their friends over totally. as well so like make it more worthwhile. Absolutely. Yeah. And then, you know, I think if you build a big enough relationship with them, they'll stay with you, yep. you know. And that's mm-hmm. what one thing so many of the people I now go to for skin treatments are ones who used to do mobile or who yeah. I've been with for years, you know. And so it does give you that relationship, yeah. I think, with people, which is really, really important. Um, as a female business owner, what do you feel like the difference is now compared to when you started back when you were 19? <laughs> <sighs> wow. That's a, I should have probably looked into this question a bit more. <laughs> no, I guess what is, what, do you I mean, feel I like d- there's different? Oh, definitely, yeah. I mean, people say all the time, you've done all this on your own. Like, they're yeah. shocked. I'm like, of course I fucking have. Like, why <laughs> totally. wouldn't I have been able to? Um, and I guess it's happened so organically. Yeah. I do think there's a huge shift and we're all sort of watching that happen right yeah. now. Um, I mean, I've been able to be a single mum basically and raise my kids and not have to have a nanny or help and look, yeah. and still have my same lifestyle yeah. because of this business. Yeah. And I kind of think, it's, thank God, <laughs> because Sydney's fucking expensive, as totally. we all know. But um, 
yeah, I still get the like, oh, so you've done all this by yourself. And I think, yeah, of course I have. <laughs> why, how, why wouldn't I have? Totally. Um, yeah, it's definitely changing. I think, I think a lot like more you women said, in business now. Yeah, yeah, and like you said, I think one of the big reasons for women to go into business in the first place is because they want to create the lifestyle they want, particularly yeah. if they want to have a family. Yeah. And it does often give you more flexibility you know, yeah. being able to work for yourself. So that's a big difference. Um, I've got women that say to me, not that, you know, my ex-husband, we're, we're really good friends and he's fantastic and haven't got a bad word to say about the guy. He's awesome. Yeah. But I know a lot of women who obviously I see them day in, day out in the salon and some are just in awful marriages and they yeah. just want to leave their partners and they can't because yeah. they're stuck without, an, Completely. without their career or anything. And I just think, yeah. thank God, yeah, I kept mine. <laughs> totally. No, it does. It gives you options. It yeah. gives you the ability to, yeah, be more flexible, particularly mm-hmm. when you have kids. And, and that is the hardest thing sometimes, yeah. um, you know, to be able to juggle or even make that transition if you want to go back to work after yeah. having kids and then having to figure out what you want to do. Yeah. And so, no, I think it is um it's amazing for that, definitely, yeah. um, to kind of set your life up for how you want it to be. Hi, everyone. I wanted to quickly talk about the sponsor of this podcast, Vela Days. Vela Days creates simple and highly effective skincare to amplify your routine in the shortest possible time. Vela Days creates simple and highly effective skincare to amplify your routine in the shortest possible time. There are three clinically proven products that replace an entire 12 step skincare routine so you can do more with less. Vela Days is available online now, so head over to the website at veladays.com and take their quick two-minute skin quiz so you can see how to improve your skincare routine for better results. As a listener of the Skin and You podcast, you can get 20% off your first order with the code Skin and You online now, and the details will be in the show notes. You have quite a good personal brand, I would say, as well as your business brand. Um, do you think that's really important? Um, and have you ever found it's quite hard to maintain both of them? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's hard work. I mean, both brands, two kids, 14 staff and, yeah. done, and like social commitments, which are part of the personal brand, which then, you know, yeah. follows into obviously that's part, that's part of the, the Kristen Fisher eyebrows brand and yeah. people like the personality and um, I kind of never really wanted to separate the two, but my old GM, she just was really pushing for it. And I'm kind of glad she did because through yeah. lockdown, it just, yeah, we got a lot of jobs. And I mean, got us through yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think having the personal brand definitely helps as well. If you've got that kind of personality, a lot of people don't. Yeah. Um, but it does sort of feed into the Kristen Fisher eyebrows brand. Yeah. Look, I think it's interesting. Like you said, having the two, Separate or connected is a really tough mm. one, I find, and that's something I've struggled with as well. I've, I, you know, I was even told by our old PR agency, you shouldn't have a personal brand because it could affect your reputation and that could affect your business. And I thought, no. is that where we're at nowadays? I'm, I am who I am. I wear my heart on my exactly. sleeve, and I think people like the fact that I'm. I think unapologetically it, me. And you're not Kristen. You know, you are Kristen Fisher Eyebrow, but. It I'm is also, also a person. Yeah. You're also a person. Yeah. And the business is also a business. Like yeah. you said, you've got 14 staff who embody yeah. that business mm-hmm. as well and represent you every yeah. day. It has its own life. I think as a female business owner, I think probably because it's quite a small industry mm. here, the beauty industry. Mm-hmm. So I think that is tough. You know, it's a very small pool, even in press and media. You know, it's it's a very, there's a, a little kind of pool of people who do everything. So it's an interesting one, I guess, where reputation in the industry does become a big part of it. Yeah. But I don't think that means separating them has to be a thing. I think, like you said, it gives a personality to yeah. it. It gets I mean, people to get to know you. I have to admit, when I left the KFA Instagram page, that, I mean, it, it declined because yeah. obviously my personality wasn't on there, but they all yeah. followed yeah. my page. So they're also kind of to the business. So yeah. the business didn't decline at all, but the page itself did. Yeah. Um, thank God my brand, personal brand, still exists because yeah. obviously that's keeping that yeah. ticking. But I think I could have kept the, the same page. Yeah. But um, I think it's interesting because exactly like you said, and maybe that's, I think, a, a shift in social as well where mm. now every business is on social media mm-hmm. and, yeah, do, does a person want to follow a business or do they want to follow the personality or yeah. something that's more personal for me, to it's that. like I'm, I am, they, they like yeah. following the story. Yeah. And, you, know. <laughs> <laughs> you have a very exciting life. <laughs> I think just because I'm real and I yeah. don't really, nothing really phases me and I don't really play into some of the Sydney 
drama, which yeah. all goes on around me. But um, which probably comes, I guess, from you being, I think, probably att- detached from detached, it as, yeah. as a child. You know, not yeah. growing up here. Not growing up here. And, yeah. I've had this really down to earth, sort of wholesome upbringing. Definitely. I came here and I was like, you know, you <laughs> now can't... I'm in Double Bay. And I'm <laughs> yeah. here. My dad always says, "You've made it from Broome to Bay Street." <laughs> <laughs> it's very true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I mean, think... I, I like that I've got a separate brand, but at the end of the day, I could have stayed on that other page and kept my yeah. personality there and. Yeah, Yeah. but it's hard. And, you know, like you said, I think things come up that sometimes make it difficult to Mm. have the two and and you do have to be protective of a brand, I guess. But um, I think ultimately now with so much information, so much Mm -hmm. out there, I think if anything I've learned from being customer-based business and things like that Mm. is there needs to be some kind of real connection. Mm -hmm. There needs to be something personable that people can catch on because otherwise, you know, you're just following seven different million businesses and it's all the same. Yeah. And that that makes it There has to be an identity, totally. There has to be. I remember when Ava and Beck were doing Ultraviolet and they were just, like, teaching me about who Violet was and what she was about and, like, how her language, you know, how she speaks to the audience. And it was so cool, like, having them, watching them create this sort of, you know, Person. person that doesn't, doesn't exist, but yeah. she, obviously it's a lot of it's Ava. Yeah, I don't know if you know Ava. Yeah, no, and <laughs> Hi, look, Aves, if you yeah. <laughs> but please listen. Um, no, but you're right, and it's one of the things I think that Zoe Foster Blake has done incredibly with Go To. Not only that, that is her voice, but it's that that is probably her voice in a box of mm. Go To, but it's not her face. No, and I think yeah, that's so agree. interesting. Is that you will never really see her in their marketing no. at all. But it's a personality that you can essentially imagine. It's it's her, her yeah. face. You, can, you can hear her saying <laughs> yeah. the, the captions. But and know. I think yeah. that's so amazingly well done mm-hmm. because, like you said, then you can have that personal brand that has its own life yeah. um, as well, and they're not so intrinsically connected. Yeah, which is. Um, yeah, um, I mean, a marketing feat, <laughs> really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, very, very handy. Um, and I think, you know, like you said before, being a mum, running a business, so incredibly hard yeah. um, <laughs> for anybody. <laughs> Has your perspective on how to juggle that work-life balance as a parent and business owner changed as you've gotten older now? Um, yes, I know. I mean, I still try and do, I mean, I was, you know, born in the 80s and my mum was a full-time stay-at-home mum and, my dad worked and came home every day at five and she'd have dinner ready and, like, she just was the stay-at-home mum. But they, yeah. they've got the most, my parents have the most beautiful relationship and I can't complain. But yeah. I look at it now and I think I'm doing all of that myself yeah. at the moment. Um, it's fucking hard. <laughs> and I've, we've still never really had a proper nanny. Yeah. I mean, we right now we do them week on, week off. And yeah. it's obviously every second week I get yeah. my freedom and it's yeah. great. <laughs> But I love having them and I miss them when I don't have them. But that juggle, just getting out the door in the morning. So like this morning, just making the lunches, getting breakfast, getting to make sure they had their right homework and soccer shoes and what have you. (laughs) Then getting straight to work. It's just so. It's a lot. The time, I'm I'm so like deficient (laughs) with my time in the mornings. I know and it's funny because sometimes I don't know if it's easier in a couple or not sometimes. Yeah. Like sometimes if you're just regimented and you know your routine. Well, now, like, yeah, I look at it now. You just know how to do it and it's like militant. <laughs> I do. I do. I have one really militant yeah. week. Then the other week I'm like, wake yeah, up at anything. 8.30 <laughs> and sometimes 9 o'clock. Go for a walk. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's really hard being a working mum, but I think most women, well, a lot of women have to these days to some capacity. Totally. Yeah, well, especially and want to. Every, and, and want just to. have to figure yeah. out that juggle. And it's a constant struggle and I do it's think, bloody hard. Yeah, and I also think, I mean, particularly in Sydney and places over here on the eastern states where it's just the cost of living is so high, yeah. um, especially around here, it yeah. would be really hard to not have to have be to dual income. It would be impossible. Um, I got our daycare bill the other day. We spent almost 60 grand on daycare. No, it's and wild. The, and that's impossible if yeah. you both weren't earning a decent income, which no, doesn't happen to most people. Like, that's ridiculous. Yeah, it's almost like it's sometimes it's what's the point of working? Totally. <laughs> the but other that, it's it's yeah. almost not. It, it makes it so difficult. And I oh, think when it's, it's, have you got two a day, Ken? I've got two, Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember those so, days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait till you get to public school. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> it's great, yeah. <laughs> got that next year, we're coming. But, no, yeah. it is. And it it's hard because ultimately it often takes the decision away from the woman whether they can work yeah. or not, if it's viable. But once and you push through yeah, and then you that's start right. cruising after. That's it. I think yeah. it's not till they're older you start, you know, yeah. finally getting a bit of a break. Yeah. And it's hard because I think so much of our identity is wrapped up in what we do, whether that's a good thing or not, I don't mm-hmm. know yet. I'm still yet to figure that out. Mm-hmm. But 
so much of it is wrapped up in what we do, what our job is, what we do day to day. And if you don't get that option or if you're stuck in a job that you don't love mm. or, you know, you are in a family life where you can't do what you want to do so mm. much, that's, it's hard. That's hard. It's really hard and it's a really. Particularly these days it's like you see everything, you just see totally, want, you know. It's that's like... it. Everything's out there on mm. show mm-hmm. and sometimes it looks really bloody easy and it's yeah. probably not. It's not. You know. <laughs> if anyone thinks that <laughs> yeah. anything in my life looks easy, it's definitely not. <laughs> it's fun. It. it definitely is it's fun. fun. And I think, I think it was Lee Campbell actually I saw the other day. She said, she mentioned something. It's like, you know, realistically if I post 20 stories a day, you see maybe three minutes of my life and. And I was just like, you know, that's so, so true. true. Yeah. You know, you, there's so 24 hours oh, there that you're me not. Me posting my thotty yeah. selfies and stuff, like really feeling myself. <laughs> then I like wake up in the morning looking like Hagrid. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, yeah, it, but there's a lot that goes on. So much, especially when there's kids behind, like yeah. involved. Oh, this morning, <laughs> I just remember I could hear Eddie going, he's seven. He was like, I'm going to get the fucking knife. And I was like, Eddie. <laughs> and I was like, if my neighbours could hear this, like, they'd be like, what the what hell? What is going on in this house? He's yelling about not I'm having not. enough milk. <laughs> cereal. Like, anyway. It's fun. Yeah. It's totally it's normal. 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 Yeah. It's totally normal. Um, <laughs> I just absolutely love how... Um, niche eyebrows have become now like you said before they can absolutely make or break a mm-hmm. face and I just think you know you guys are just killing it at Christopher Fisher eyebrows amazing um what took you I guess from like doing waxing and things like that to then going into the semi-permanent um tattooing space what was that kind of transition like for you I mean that was becoming quite popular and there were clients that we were saying that we just couldn't help because I had no hair you know and I was like okay it's really mm. we've spent a lot of time and see money because we've done a lot of overseas training but yeah. aside from the fact that we spend a lot of money a lot of time learning about different skin types and yeah. I mean that's what it comes down to is the skin it's got nothing to do with your hair it's to do with your skin and how your skin yeah. reacts to different types of semi-permanent and what colors and what have wow. you but it's not for everyone and yeah. I'm pretty honest if people come in and say they want to I just say no mm. you just need actually just to get a wax and tint yeah. you know you need to just come back regularly yeah. um it's still quite you know, like we're doing quite a lot of them still mm. to this day. Lips are becoming quite popular now. Yeah. I've got people asking me day in, day out if we're going to start doing the cheek sort of blush tattooing yeah. and freckles and things like that. So it's, it's, like, it's that's really, becoming really popular overseas. Yeah, it's so, really yeah. big in, in Paris and in France. And yeah. so, yeah, I mean, I just need to have an excuse to go back to Paris really to <laughs> yeah. do the training. That's fine. <laughs> I'll come with yeah, you. Yeah, okay, you're my model. <laughs> Great. I mean, I'll more than happy yeah, to. Yeah, I think people are just sort of wanting um, a natural looking. However, you know, natural looking yeah. enhancements, but yeah. to make your mornings easier. It's so interesting because I think the rise in that whole no makeup, makeup, yes, and that clean yeah. girl aesthetic, you know, this mm. just really is taking that to another step yeah. in that this is, it's just, your base is done. Oh, like you know? right now, my, I mean, my skin isn't fantastic today because I'm a little bit tired, but just having lashes on and yeah. I'm, I'm all about, I don't, I barely wear foundation yeah. anymore. It's just, just about skin. To yeah. Totally. And I mean, that's and amazing. And go. <laughs> yeah. But that's an incredible, you know, in a day and age where everything is so busy and mm-hmm. we're crazy and everyone is tired and stressed to be able to not have to worry about putting a whole mask on yes you know because yeah. you're not happy about how you look or anything like that that's a game changer totally you know for anyone yeah. I think so I think um like you said you know there are a lot of different trends and things like that coming out from overseas what do you think are some of those biggest ones we're going to see now for summer coming in I think it's going to be a little while yet, so I do think that semi-permanent blush yeah. and the little freckles, they look really <laughs> I cute. I feel like but you're buying for the freckles. No, I really am going for the freckles. A lot of people aren't, but I'm really watching it really closely overseas. Yeah. And it's more for the really sort of sort of young, younger skin, I should say, just because yeah. they've got no pores and it just looks amazing. Whereas for older skin, we just look like we've got more pores. Um and then there's like tattooed bronzer and things like that that's yeah, coming wow. in. So like it's okay. basically like a whole face. I know. Insane. Insane, but it's really natural and it's yeah. really like just so subtle, but it yeah. looks just basically basically contours the face. So it oh, looks I pretty cool. <laughs> I'm just going to have to do that, that training overseas. Yeah. You have to come with me. I'm, I'm ready. Let's go. Cool. All good. Um, I've seen you mention that you're actually immune to Botox, which totally is... Totally immune. Uh, Oh, quite a rare condition. Um, so rare. Yeah, so really interesting so that you actually have to work quite hard to find sort of the latest things in anti-aging yep. and things mm-hmm. like that. 
What uh, does that look like for you and what kind of things do you tend to rely on instead of injectables? Well, how long have you got? <laughs> <laughs> uh, my skincare routine is pretty hectic. It's something different daily just depending on what my skin needs, if yeah. I've been travelling or if I've been eating poorly and I had enough water or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but every month I'll get laser. Yeah. Um, Pico laser with Brooke at Melanie Grant. I get skin needling at the skin bar with beautiful Sam. Yeah. I go under the heel light yeah. three times a week in my salon and I'm constantly masking. Yeah. I don't use a lot of retinol um, just because it wasn't really working for my skin, but I use yeah. a lot of acids and things like that. Yeah, amazing. And just try not to like frown Skincare too much. Skincare is the one, yeah, <laughs> I know. Someone told me that as well, yeah, just don't move your face at all. I was like, I'm such an expressive so talker. So am I. I'm like the most expressive talker ever. It's so hard. I know. I know. Okay, cool. No, I mean, look, we love relying on skincare. Yes. Oh, we And need. I think, it, you know, and like I'm, um, next week I'm going to see Dr. Van Park, I love her, for that Profilo treatment. Amazing. Yeah, I so I've been waiting for that. I have wanted to try Profilo. Profilo, whatever yeah. it is, yeah. Um, very interesting there's uh, some people love it some people don't I would oh, wait till you know how wait got. till your second treatment <laughs> I've heard wait till your second treatment you'll get your the best results okay, good. um yeah because yeah it's interesting huge overseas um yeah. so it's it's I'm glad it's here now um because there's a lot of really interesting things in biomodelers so yeah. um yeah it'll be interesting to see if if you like it or not yeah I'm um, interested too because I've had yeah. I haven't had anything in over yeah. a year so obviously oh, we haven't really? had Botox in years yeah. <laughs> but, um we did a bit of um jawline filler about a year ago so yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing her yeah yeah, yeah that'll be good I, I'm glad I just I'm love by modelers so I'm so glad we're getting more of them mm. here so that's very exciting I she would fix me yeah <laughs> <laughs> she'll be fine um so I always like to end this podcast on one tip uh mm-hmm. it's just one day de- like easy daily practice I think anyone can do implement right now to improve their overall health it can be skin related it doesn't have to be mm-hmm. uh whatever you think just something easy I think maybe that you do or um that anyone can do so I'll go first give you a second mm-hmm. thing mine today is super vague but it's my podcast so I can do whatever Want. Okay, um, <laughs> but it's unintentionally hair related probably but um it's that just don't forget that there are a huge range of other things uh that we can do other than skincare and products I would mm-hmm. say um to help with skin and body situations and this comes from me um a friend reminded me this because I was complaining to her that my hair is falling out like crazy because I've been stressed um and she was listening to me rattle off a million products that I was using and she just kind of calmly said just don't forget you know there are a few other things like eat a banana every day to get potassium have a magnesium salt bath put some minerals in your water Mm -hmm. just little things like get sunlight you know Mm -hmm. that I think sometimes we forget and we just go for like the quick fixes with big flashy products and things like that that because they sound fun and they sound really interesting and they will give you a really quick fix but yeah I think there's just there's a whole host of other little things that we can do um, each day to just try and remember to do those little bits and pieces because they can probably help in the long story oh, of things yeah. and help with the maintenance one if you do use other products and things like that. So, um, yeah, that's mine for today. Well, that's yours. Well, mine <laughs> is, um, mine's, well, I've got quite a few that I do randomly most days, but <laughs> if I'm not exercising, I try and do 20 squats when I'm brushing my teeth in the morning and 20 that. squats at night, I think. If I just haven't had time for anything. Yep. But I also, I'm a serial napper. So I think like, <laughs> if you can squeeze a nap in, but I know that sounds completely unrealistic for, for most no, people. <laughs> I think that's so good because it's something that I think a lot more people are doing now. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's becoming a bit more acceptable. Maybe. Yes, a bit of a nice, yes. And, <laughs> and also, I love a nap. And an, an overnight mask. I love an overnight mask. Yeah, so they always really help. But yeah, one. popping some squats in while you're brushing your teeth. Yeah. Can help. I'm all for those little random moments in life mm-hmm. where you're doing something that you could probably yep. be doing something else on just to use that. Yes, time. just use that time. So I love that. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much, Kristen, thank for coming you on the so pod. Much for having me on. I'm you're so amazing. Happy. No, I'm so glad you were able to come, and I just love everything you do. And thank mm-hmm. you. Can't wait to take you take you to Paris. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Thanks, thank Amelia. you. No worries.